Welcome to episode 5 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. Uh, this is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Matt. This is Nick. We had just finished up The King of Nostalgia. You guys have fun? It was very fun. Yeah, it seemed like I got cut screwed. He kept on getting questions that I knew. I was really looking forward to seeing a corn dog. <laughs> well, who knows? Before the day's over, we might see one. Or actually hear one. <laughs> okay. So Brad had asked me... I, I handed out prizes, um, Matt got a few video games that I had been holding on for the longest time. I found Star Ocean at the end of time from Dimple like five years ago and just never sent it to him. I know his got copy got taken from a co-worker from Domino's. So I gave Brad a trade. I traded one of my coveted Resident Evil figures that I hold so dearly. I'll just take a trade for it. And then he asked me, what did you ask me? I said, what do you want for it? And I said, I'll pick something out. So we'll see what I get. See what I want to take. He's already got, he's already claimed the treasure, so I'm going to claim mine. Probably going to be something hanging up on a wall somewhere. Probably, uh, it sounds like it's quite a treasure or prize, but more of a pillage because <laughs> you know I want these toys, you know I want the Resident Evil figures, and you're like, I'll give him this, but he has to give me what I want for the taking. <laughs> it has to because I have a missing spot on my wall. I don't want to hang my Rob Zombie limited edition action figure that Uncle Ron gave me because it, it all turned yellow. Okay, so Matt, you're in town. When did you come in? Uh, I came in uh, last Tuesday, so the 14th. And I just noticed he checked his watch. How many, how many people <laughs> wear watches these days? I was actually thinking about wearing one for the accessory. Where, you know how like women wear jewelry. Uh -huh. I was about getting a cool watch to wear. And would it constantly flash 12 or would it be a fancy watch <laughs> that has handles and dials on it? No, it'd probably have like three different dials on it. Or it could be one of those video games watches we had when we were little. The Tiger Electronic watches? Yeah. Those was, games suck. Yeah, Robocop was one of them, I remember. So you came in Tuesday. Yeah. What have you been doing since? Visiting family. Uh... Well, let's actually backtrack. Matt's been in the Army for eight years. Almost eight years. Yeah. Almost eight years. He left when he was 18. Kept re-upping because they kept holding incentive bonuses in front of your face. Hey, re-sign, you get another 3000 Is that pretty much how it went? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so he kept getting bonuses, re-signing. And now he's uh, almost done with the Army. He's uh, med-boarded. Can you describe med-boarded for us? Yeah, basically it's a medical discharge where... um. They basically want you to get out because you're injured or hurt, and um, yeah, so that's basically what I'm doing. Is uh, I have a bum ankle, don't know what happened to it, didn't twist it, didn't break it, and uh, basically they sent me to Washington to get medically discharged, and yeah, so I'm actually supposed to be finishing up next couple months. Have they tried placebo treatment? They, they've uh, <laughs> they, they've tried a few things. Uh, I've done uh. Physical therapy, um, they gave me a steroid injection into my ankle, um, just like... Like Toradol, or... Huh? Like Toradol? Tor no, it's not Tor, or anything. No, Toradol is the medication. <laughs> no! <laughs> I'm not, I'm not hip with the drug term, so... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I got a PhD in drug terms. <laughs> <laughs> Came down here for, uh, about a week, so what have you been doing since then? Um, really just seeing, you know, family and friends, uh, like I went to one of my buddies' houses, uh, for a couple of nights, and then, uh, been living with my mom, then over at your place last night, so, I mean, I've just been around, hanging out. Yeah, Matt was, he stayed over last night, he watched me play Nino Cooney, Wrath of the White Witch for PlayStation 3, I'm sure he was full of jealousy, because I can't <laughs> play it, uh, we were talking, he was, uh, actually really talking to my son, Willie, they seemed pretty, get along pretty well, and this morning... I went to bed around 11, so I wake up to Nick's text message with a question mark. I'm like, oh, it's already 7.20. I get up, Willie knocks on my door right as soon as I get up. I say, come in, he comes in, he says, uh, oh, I was just making sure you're up. I said, yeah, I'm up. Then he's like, do you want me to wake Matt up? I said, yeah, go ahead, go wake Matt up. He, he leaves for about a minute. I'm guessing he went into the garage where Matt was sleeping. And came back in my room and said, I don't want to wake him up. He's in the army. He might have reflexes. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
<laughs> like Willie's gonna say, Matt, wake up, and then you're gonna cry to chop him in the neck <laughs> or something. Yeah, and I've actually, when I woke Matt up, I've never seen anyone wake up the way he did. I said, Matt, and I touched him, I said, Matt, and he just slowly opens his eyes. <laughs> and that just creeped me out so much. Who <laughs> slowly opens their eyes when they wake up? I guess army people. Yeah. So I said, it kind of scared me, so I said, do you want another half hour of sleep? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, that'll be good. So I went and made breakfast. I made some sausage and some eggs and some toast, and I figured it was time to wake him up. So he woke up to a homely cooked breakfast. I actually gave him a chance to earn 15 additional points on the way over here for the game. I played a tune for him, and I said, if you can name this tune, you get 15 points. It was... Gerudo Valley from Ocarina of Time and he was unable to name it. That's but, too bad. Yeah. Probably would have helped him win the game. Well, everyone's a winner, so everyone had a prize. <laughs> so I actually wanted to play a tune for Matthew. Uh, actually, I wanted to go into this because it's one of my most favorite stories of us growing up. Uh, I have it actually set up here. If I could do this real quick. Okay, so for um, those of you who played Final Fantasy VII, know that's the Shinra March theme where you have to go do the parade and everything. And Matthew, when we were growing up, I was probably uh, in high school, I believe, maybe ninth grade, uh, and he decided to play games late that night, like every other night. And I just woke up to hearing that tunes go over and over and over and I was thinking are you ever going to progress in the game so I don't have to hear that fucking tune anymore and I it just went on and on it seemed like forever and I just would fall asleep and wake up still hear it and it just annoyed the crap out of me and so I just went in there and I you know just turned off the game and went back to bed and now, is that the case that he just come in and turn off the TV and go back to bed? Well, I remember it being a little scarier than that. <laughs> <laughs> because, yeah, I was playing that game. Like, I don't know if I, I just couldn't find the way or if it just took that long or what. <laughs> or just sitting there in the room just looking. <laughs> 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 but I just remember the door opening and, like, it swung open to... I look at him, and for some reason, his lips were curled, so they were shaped like Predator. <laughs> and then, like, it's either his eyes are all red and everything, and he just puts his hand over all, all angry, like, and flip the switch. <laughs> like, no! <laughs> and then I'm pretty sure I probably cried that night after he did that, but I, I think he went to bed with a smile. Because <laughs> no, I was still pretty angry. <laughs> I had to sleep it off. But yeah, that, that um, memory like that, it just reminds me of Matt being little and him being able to play games until 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning and then mom letting him sleep in until 10 or 11. He would never eat breakfast with us. It was always left on the griddle. Yeah, it was left in the skillet, just cold and cold could be. <laughs> And his and that time his cold his food was getting cold and eaten because Brandon and I would go by and nibble on the sausages like little rats and just run away. Sleep in till ten o'clock, will you? <laughs> yeah, but that was just looking back on that. That's just hilarious. So in episode one, you you learned you heard about Brandon's shower habits where he likes to sit down and take a shower, get all of his crevices clean for some reason. I don't know how he does it. I tried it again today. I still can't do it. <laughs> it must take some skill. But um, Matthew had a little uh, incident when he was little. A little ritual, I should say. A weekly incident. <laughs> a weekly <laughs> ritual, which was called bath night. <laughs> Matthew did not like taking baths. Like a normal person, they would every one to two days. Matt would actually sit in the shower and, and bring in a crate full of action figures and play with them. Well into his high school days. <laughs> hours upon hours. Once you got him in, you couldn't get him out. 
<laughs> and so what did you do with the toys? Did you, like, have scenarios that you played out? Like you had Venom and Spider-Man fight or... Yeah, you know, just like a little action figure, you know, they're, you know, fighting and stuff like that. It's little scenarios. Yeah. So, uh, do you remember when bath night was? Yeah, Sunday nights. <laughs> uh, as late as I could possibly make it. Because I'd be playing games, and like, constantly, constantly, and then... I was like, it's bath time. I'm like, no, I'm fighting a boss. Can't do it. <laughs> it's like trying to get a cat into a bath. <laughs> <laughs> the Wicked Witch of the West. <laughs> I'm melting. <laughs> yeah. I thought you said Mom was the Wicked Witch. Huh? <laughs> well, she was at some time. Like that one time when uh, we were little. We were, I think, in fifth grade. And Matt's dad became my hero because he bought Matthew two Super Nintendo games for his birthday. Oh, I remember that. He bought him Ultraman, which was, we played it, it wasn't that good, and then there was Final Fantasy 2, and Matt said he picked that game because it had a sword on it, yeah. and we knew nothing of that game, we didn't know anything about it, and it changed our lives forever. <laughs> that game was so incredible, and it just completely changed the way I looked at games because... It, it introduced, you know, the whole storyline, the whole Final Fantasy series, and we actually ended up going back and playing the first one after that. But um, speaking of Matt Zeb, uh, and also speaking of the child penises you would look at in the previous podcast when you were younger, uh, you being little and people showing them your wieners. Before we get on to the wiener talk, <laughs> I just wanted to say that. Um, my mom was cruel because when we were little, she took away the um, Super Nintendo for a week because we wouldn't clean our room. Is that why she took it away? Because we wouldn't clean I our room. I just remember being devastated. We couldn't <laughs> last two days without that Super Nintendo. Especially when we were in the middle of Final Fantasy 2. That was cruel. Um, mom, even to this day, it was cruel. <laughs> and, and she didn't keep it for a week. I don't. I couldn't imagine going a week without video games. I think we begged for her and pleaded, and she said, "Well, if you promise to clean your room, I'll give it back to you." And it was like three days. Yeah, and we cleaned that room in like five minutes. <laughs> so uh, that you can go back to your penis story now. Okay. So in earlier episodes, you hear Brad talking about seeing John's penis under the table from kindergarten, he, uh, him looking at his uncircumcised uh, friend's penis, Greg, in the bathroom. I think this is your first exposure to adult penis. Yes, it is. When Richard ran in... Why was he chasing us? You threw an orange at him? I threw an orange at his back. A, an orange slice. Why'd you do that? <coughs> For attention. Okay. So Brad threw an orange at Richard's back, and Richard comes... Because you got to understand, when you, you have twin boys in the house with Matthew, you know, with Matthew there, we're already at a loss for attention. Add another grown uh, macho machismo Mexican guy in there taking away attention from our mom. Who looks like Richie Valens' brother from <laughs> La Palma. A cross between him and Prince. <laughs> I remember yeah. I said that, Richard, you look like Prince. <laughs> yeah, growing up, Brandon and I had a speech impediment. We talked about it on an earlier podcast, but it ended up getting cut due to audio issues. But uh, we couldn't say our, our sounds right. We would say them as W's which was horrible. We finally got out of that when, in our junior year in high school, we got out of that, so. Yeah, so, so I say, Richard, you look like Prince. And he says, I don't look like a little faggot on TV. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what's a faggot? <laughs> yeah, so, throwing uh, Richard into the mix with Matthew already being a baby and getting all of my mom's attention, when Richard would come over, you know, he would steal the rest of the attention. So I tried to do anything I could to get attention. And I decided to uh, cut up an orange, eat three of those slices because I was hungry. <laughs> and I sacrificed the last one to hit Richard's back. I threw it right on his back. He chased me into our bedroom. And as he was running, he had on these white boxers that had blue diamonds on them. And his mouth came out of the hole while he was chasing me. And I was like, whoa, that's a pee-pee right there. <laughs> so that was my first exposure to an adult male penis. 
So my first exposure to adult male penis would have to be Uncle Ron. Uh, he sang this, the, the, what do we call it, the PP song? The Peter song. The Peter song. When he got out of the shower, uh, he sang... Swing your pee pee round and round. <laughs> Swing your Peter. Swing your Peter round and round. Make sure it doesn't hit the ground. And as he sung this, he was naked and he swung his Peter round and round like a helicopter. <laughs> a helicopter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Matt, what was your first exposure to a male penis? Uh, the first I, I don't even remember. An adult male. But penis. I think I think the closest to uh, was um. When I was in high school, and uh, I was Meredith like, put his mouth in his cock in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I think it does involve Meredith. But <laughs> God, I know. <laughs> it was like some like birthday party. We're in, we're at some we're at a pizza place in Rolinda or whatever, and uh, wow, at a pizza place. <laughs> yeah, and you know we're we're well. He was always one of those guys that we would always you know mess with. You know, not not to be mean. You know, just because it was fun, which probably was mean to him, but. No, I mean, we would always mess with him, stuff like that, and uh, so we were we were just like you know messing with him, and then he gets up from the ground. He's like, "Hey, Chavez," that I turn and look, and his, when I was with Rosie, so we both look, and Rosie I, was there. Yeah, and then I all I see is this weird thing because that was the first time I think I'd ever seen an uncircumcised penis. <laughs> I didn't know that thing was an actual penis. I didn't know what it was, I and uncircumcised penises are weird. Yeah. Yeah. Look like a woodpecker beak. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was the first time. And I, I was more angry that fact that there were children in this area. You know, then... Were, weren't you still a child at 17, technically? Well, you know, was younger was kid. Younger. That's like... But, uh, was Meredith 18? No. Oh, okay. no. No, we're, we're, right. he's only a few months older than me, so... But yeah, that, was, that I think that's the... First time I got penis in my face. Nick, do you have any tales? That'd uh, probably be my dad. Oh, okay. uh, Phil Jones. Yep, my father, Phil Jones, that's right. Adam Carolla has this bit where he says, um, if you want your kid to think that you have a humong- humongous dick, you have to show him at an early age and just never show him again. <laughs> and to this day, I still think my dad is the biggest dick in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen my fair share of porn of the i my fair share of uncircumcised dicks. <laughs> now, but yeah, I still think my, my dad has a humongous doll. <laughs> uh, remember the the time you scared my kids? Oh, that was hilarious. So what happened was uh, my wife Karen and I went out to dinner and a movie one night, and Mom and Matt d- watched Jordan and Sam. Sam was very young. I was over there, too. Brandon was there. Was I living with you still? I think so. Yeah. So, um... Brandon must have got off late, and my mom came over and Matt to watch the kids, or she just might have wanted to spend time with them. Uh, so Jordan and Sam are there, Earth and Fire. Uh, Sam is younger at the point. He's more of a baby. We go watch a movie, and all of a sudden, I come home, and I tell Jordan, you know, he's like, oh, yay, mom and dad's home. And I say, oh, we're not your parents. We're aliens, and we've come to eat your food face and he just freaked out screamed and i've joked around with him like this before but unbeknownst to me matthew already told them (laughs) that your parents are not your real parents they're aliens and they're going to come home and eat your face he used the same words (laughs) as i did no what happened is we're playing mortal Kombat. no this this was a different well this might have led up to it because I think Jordan was watching me play Mortal Kombat, and he was walking by, and I used Melina's Fatality, yeah, where she takes off her mask and chews off the head, and that with, you know, Matt telling him this, and me coming home stating it, I come home and tell him that I'm going to eat his face, and he just starts freaking out, having a whole full-blown fit, screaming, crying, and I don't know why, and then Matt tells me the story, and I said, oh, that's why he's freaking out. <laughs> I remember Brandon kind of did a dick move to Jordan when you squashed him. Well, no, that wasn't a dick move. We were wrestling, and I had to get the upper hand. <laughs> <laughs> so you had to get an upper hand on a then eight-year-old. Yeah. So Br- Brandon and Jordan's wrestling, and all of a sudden, I don't know if Brandon slips 
but he fell on him. No, I, I body slammed him, but I held him so he wouldn't get hurt. So I held my arms under him and slammed him on the ground. Well, I was on my knees because, you know, I didn't want to get too big of an advantage on him. So I was on my knees and I slammed him on the ground. And you hear all the wind come out of him. <laughs> and then he looks at me, I look at him, and I said, what? He's like, I just pooped my pants. <laughs> <laughs> So all the wind came out of him from his mouth and from his anus. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so me squishing his stomach made him poop his pants. And instead of the, the rational thing to do, uh, like you know, okay, let's take these off. Let's get you in the shower. No, I can't touch poop. I can't look at it, or I'll start gagging. I'll start throwing up. Even the the thought of it is making me feel nauseous. So, so before before I could even say, hey Jordan, let's get you in the shower, Brad says. Go outside right. Go, go outside right now. So he Jordan runs outside, freezing cold outside during the winter time. Brad instructs Jordan to remove his underwear, which he does, and then he has him turn around, and Brad sprays him off with the hose. <laughs> the only logical thing. My wife wasn't home. <laughs> Most of these situations we got into, my wife wasn't home, and. I just had to think on a, think on a whim. So his his whimsical moment was go outside. I'll spray down with ice cold water <laughs> in an already freezing cold winter, and then you can come back inside well, after you're clean. I had him bend over so it wouldn't take as long. So <laughs> you remember when we were would wear capes? Oh, that went out. Oh, when you guys were what in junior high? Yeah, it was if summer that? break. All we did we just found Lufia too, uh, and we were like. Who needs clothes? <laughs> we're like, we're too lazy to get dressed. So we took our bed sheets from when we woke up, just tied them around our neck, and just walked around in capes all day. If someone came over, we'd close the sheet up, give ourselves some decency. Yeah. We hid most of our shame. <laughs> I remember the maintenance people coming over to, you know, they would come over and spray for roaches or lay down their little gel in the cupboards and we let them in and we just cover ourselves up with our capes we close it like Batman it's like go ahead and do your bidding please enter the house <laughs> oh Batman <laughs> <laughs> come to free for roaches have we <laughs> you will lose but another uh, thing I wanted to talk about is we were always Mom would always say she'd open up the room and we'd have this horrendous stench coming emitting from our room and I never really caught wind of it until I've experienced it myself with Jordan, Logan and Sam. They all sleep in the same room. Jordan doesn't want his own room yet. Don't know why he's going to junior high, but I'll wake go in and wake him up for school and it's like two hookers just died in there. Just full out rotten smell and it was just like what is this and apparently it's a mixture of all of their gases coming out <laughs> for the whole night and the cat's just in there just looking at me <laughs> like what do you want leave me leave me alone in, in my area of mist but uh, last night I was actually playing Dead Space like you said on the first podcast mm -hmm. uh, I'm on, I almost beat it I'm on chapter 11 and I couldn't go to sleep last night. When, when, whenever my wife falls asleep first, I cannot fall asleep. I don't know why. Couldn't really fall asleep. Put on Dead Space. The cat was there with me. So I'm playing Dead Space and all of a sudden I hear all these noises like Brandon said. I, I hear something scratching on the back of the couch. I look next to my cat's just she lifted her head up and looked at me like, it's not me, you better check it out. <laughs> I look back there, there's nothing back there. So I don't know what it was, but that game just plays tricks on you. It's probably Logan hiding. He actually, he he actually had one of his sleepwalking episodes last <laughs> night. He came out. He must have heard the game, and he came out. Um, Logan, he yeah, he came out full on erection, <laughs> and you can tell because he wears tidy whities and he, he's. He he puts Jordan and Sam to shame because he's got like four inches on him already, <laughs> and when he gets it when he gets an erection, the ele elastic from his underwear actually pull away from his body. So I'm just like, dude, can you put that away? Did you catch he, him dancing naked? He a few weeks ago he was dancing in the mirror. I, in my room I have a mirror closet, so he was 
sitting there naked, doing the uh, swing your Peter dance from Uncle Ron. <laughs> same thing, wiggling his hips back and forth, uh, checking out his ads at the same time, <laughs> full blown erection. I'm like. <laughs> Logan, and he just jumped. He didn't know I was in the room. He's like, what, Dad? And he just flew out like the wind that he is, threw his underwear on in one jump, put both legs through the hole in one jump, and just went about his merry business. But he came out when I was playing Dead Space. Uh, he sleepwalks. He went and actually opened up the dryer, took some clothes out of the dryer, put it back in, closed the dryer, opened up the refrigerator, closed that, came back in. I said, Logan, what are you doing? He won't respond to me. He comes in. And he sits down next to me on the couch and just falls asleep. So I'm playing my game. All of a sudden, I get to a part where all these monsters are attacking me. I'm, and I'm in my, you know, panic phase trying to beat the guys. Then what does Logan do? He gets up and he just, like, slaps me on my back. Scares the crap out of me. <laughs> and I, I, I really thought those aliens were behind me trying to get me. But it was just Logan. Uh, as far as the scratching on the couch, that was not Logan. He was still in his room. So I, that must have been my imagination. Uh, the, the cat, she just looked up, probably because I looked over at her, but I don't think she heard it. She would have got up and growled. Do you remember that green golf club you had? Yep. Do you remember where you got that? No. I, I remember we killed a, a crawdad or a crab with it, though. <laughs> In fourth grade, we had a, an option at the end of the year where we could, whoever had the most scully bucks or mud bucks, got to bid on auction. The, the bucks were named after the teacher's last name, Mr. Scully and Mrs. Mudd, and they would give you dollars based on your merit or your uh, good attendance. And uh, did we combine ours, or did we each have our own, like, I had like 681. Yeah, we, we, then we ended up combining them to have like over 1,500 or something. Yeah, so um, everyone, not everyone, Brad and I coveted, we wanted this little golf set that was from the 99 cent store to play golf with, but there was one other person that wanted it. Do you remember who else wanted it? Richard Bright. Richard Bright wanted it, and I don't know why he wanted it. I told him I was going to buy it and give it to him. I don't know why I told him that. Maybe because so he wouldn't bid on it. That's yeah. why he had the most. He had the most bucks, and I didn't want to bid on. It. I said I'll give it to you. So, auction starts at like. Two bucks. I automatically jump up to six hundred and eighty one <coughs> bucks. No one else bid for it. I win it. And then Richard's like, Thanks. I said, What are you talking about? I'm not giving this to you. He's like, You said you would. I said, I just don't want to bid on it. I'm giving it to my little brother because he has a golf tournament he has to practice for. <laughs> <laughs> and so <coughs> this ninety nine cent toy golf club was gonna help him win this so called <laughs> tournament he was gonna practice for. <laughs> Yeah, I remember that golf club saw many of my dark places. Yeah, it became just, I know it hated life. It were If it were alive, <laughs> it would have committed suicide well into its age. I remember sitting cross-legged. You, you must have had this well into our high school. You kept it for like five, six years. Yeah, Mom, Mom probably still has it in the garage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should take a picture of it and put it on the page. But So I remember sitting cross-legged on it. A summer vacation break in our cape we were playing Shining Force 2 and Lufia back to back uh, having an itch to scratch I didn't want to use my hand to soil the controller so <laughs> the, the itch went from my scrotum to my gooch to my butthole so I remember <laughs> lifting up my scrotum taking that sitting cross-legged taking that green golf club <laughs> and just going to town up and down back and forth in and out Oh, just it, abusing the shit out of it. It had it had ridges on it. Oh, it it felt good when you itched with that thing. It was just ridged all around. And, and then the the finishing move was when you were done, you would smell it. <laughs> <laughs> so that golf club seen see better days definitely. Hopefully, mom put it to retirement. But I remember just using it for my. It was my bitch. <laughs> it had ridges, and you could like twist it back and forth and around and do you remember when we got the GameCube? I remember having it and all that stuff, but uh, I was nineteen, still living at home, Brad was out of the house, Matt was there and I was looking through some ads in the paper and I came across Toys R Us at GameCube. It was like one sixty nine ninety nine. Not only did it come with the system, it came with Super Mario Sunshine 
and MLB 2004 or 2005, one of those. I said, Mom, me thinking, oh, she hasn't really bought me anything now that I'm, you know, 18 and, I'm, and you know, supposed to be out of the house. How about we get this GameCube? And she looks at it, you know, uh, holding it far away because she couldn't really see. Oh, yeah, that looks, that looks like a good deal. So we go up to uh, Toys R Us Mac in the back seat. I'm all jazzed and excited. And then I'm like, GameCube. And <laughs> I look back at Matt, and Matt's just like, so pathetic. <laughs> having a mom buy it. <laughs> He's shaking his head. He's like, this is what in his, like, uh, what would you call it? His emo phase? Emo phases? When you paint your nails black? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's cool. I used to paint my nails purple. I'd get them done at the salon, though. Oh, you're, you're a high price, you know. Hoity toity. Yep. <laughs> So, Hoity toity. Yeah. So, uh, getting the GameCube, and I just remember just the look of like disgust. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I just lost so much respect for you. <laughs> What's wrong with you? And I didn't care. I, I'm getting the GameCube. I'm playing Mario Sunshine when I get home. So, we went to a Cheesecake Factory last night, and uh, there was a girl waitress who noticed Brandon's Zelda shirt, and I told her, you know, oh, I have a Zelda tattoo. And she saw that Zelda hat. She's like, oh, I love Zelda. I like playing all the old games, the Twilight Princess. And Brandon and I, she leaves, and I'm like, dude, you should totally give her the Facebook page. Have her like us. And and he was like, I can't do it. I just can't do it. And I said, why not? And so he's like, well, because, you know, she, because I'm shy and I don't like talking to girls. <laughs> <laughs> and so I said, fine, I'll do it. And so she comes up. Takes her drink order. And you write it down. I, I wrote it down already. I wrote it down. Uh, my wife gave me a pen and paper. I wrote it down, folded it up, and she to come take the drink order. And so she leaves, and, and Brandon looks at me like, I thought you were going to give it to her. I said, when she gives me a soda, I'll give it to her. That's my plan. And then so she comes, brings the sodas out. We order calamari. Don't do it yet. No, first she drops off the water, and then she leaves. I look at Brad again. I'm like... And then he's like, oh, uh, would you bring my soda? So then she, we order a calamari, then she brings a calamari. And so I go and I'm thinking, I really have to give this to her. My wife's like, no, Brandon, he goes, the moment's passed already. And I'm like, no, I know. When she comes back, I'll be like, before I forget, you know, because of course I didn't forget. Yeah, it slipped my mind. I've just been too embarrassed to do it. So I, I finally get up the courage and she comes back and I'm like, uh, before I forget, <laughs> uh, me and my brother, you know, you you do you like old school games, and you know, you you you, you and I'm stuttering like this throughout the whole <laughs> conversation. <laughs> you like old school games, and he's my brother. We do a podcast together, and you know, he, here's our info. You should really listen to it, and check it out. And she takes it and puts it in her little waitress thing, and says, "Oh, my friend likes the old school games. I'll give it to him to listen." So I was like, that's cool. So she ended up waiting on us for three hours because uh, me, Karen, and Brandon were there. We were waiting for the rest of our party, and they had some uh, transportation issues. Well, let's let's tell the story. Um, I get I call mom. Mom says, "Oh yeah, we'll get everyone together." I guess we we should we should tell who go, who's all going. Okay, so it's uh, Brad, myself, his wife Karen, Matt, and our mom. <laughs> are getting together for Mother's Day, even though it was last week. Uh, we wanted to do mother Mom wanted to do Mother's Day with Matt, which is cool. And I said, yeah, well, that's fine. We could just do it on um, Saturday coming up. So I call Mom. We're all planning it. At first, we're going to a local Vietnamese place, Ho Viet. Then at one time, it's Oz. And finally, we end up on Cheesecake Factory because that's one of our favorite places to eat. So uh, she, we're talking. I call her around 12... Uh, I call her, she doesn't answer her phone. I call Matt around 12. Okay. He says, oh yeah, um, we're, we're still going. Mom's a cheesecake. Uh, I said, okay, no problem. Tell Matt, you know, 5.30 or 6. Cool. I call Mom. Mom's like, okay, uh, this is around 4 o'clock. She's like, yeah, uh, let's try to do 5.30. Uh, I'll get my radiators mm -hmm. leaking. Uh, I'll get on the and Matt to help me, uh, to pick me up, and we'll meet at 5.30. Okay, me thinking in my mind, she is contacting up or on a mat letting them know the plan come to find out she hasn't contacted anybody about the plan 
So Matt's sitting there thinking, you know, six o'clock, he's out uh, hanging out with his dad and Uncle Ron, you know, having a blast. So I get to the uh, restaurant around 5.10. I open up my DS, plug in my auxiliary cable for, for my car, and I'm playing Chrono Trigger through the speakers with the music and everything. And then my phone rings. I'm like, oh, it's Brad. He's like, where are you at? I said, oh, I'm here. He's like, oh, so am I. Okay, so I close up my DS, go and meet Brad in there, uh, him caring to myself, and then I call mom saying, hey, we're here. No, yeah, I say, hey, we're here. Uh, she's like, okay, um, they're still out. I said, okay, well, you know, call them and let them know, and they can meet you there. Around 5.45. We've been there. We've been there, you know, waiting. I say, okay, let me call Matt. I call Matt. I say, hey, Matt, what's up? He's like, oh, um, yeah, we're still downtown. <laughs> we're still visiting. I was like, oh, mom didn't call you? No. Okay. Well, um, we're here, you know, waiting um, at the restaurant. She's supposed to call you, let you know to come pick her up. Mind you, <laughs> we don't care that we're waiting because they have bomb food. Yeah. So we're just like ordering appetizers. We got we're having a gay old time. We're talking about the podcast or yeah. talk, talking know, about how shy we are for girls still to this day. We're not having any issues. We just feel bad for the waitress that you know this is our only tape. This is one of our tables that we're taking up, but we ordered a uh, calamari. You got those Vietnamese tacos. Karen got the soup, so we're just eating, having a blast. So uh, I call Matt. You know, I'm talking. I say, yeah, um, you guys picking her up? No, not that I know of. No, well, I don't know. <laughs> I said, oh, because her radiator's out, and she said that you're giving her a ride. Uh, Uncle Ron, we giving her a ride? And then you're all going, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're giving her a ride. We'll get a ride, so. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. Okay. I said, we're going to, oh, we're still downtown. We'll be, we'll be at the restaurant by, uh, six, well, six, six, fifteen. Don't I pick up mom? Yeah, we're going to go pick up mom. Mm, what, six o'clock rolls around? Call mom. Oh, um, I haven't talked to him yet. <laughs> <laughs> All this time, I've been telling her to call, you know, get in contact with each other, and she's not doing it for some reason. Six, ten rolls around. I call Matt. Hey, dude, we're on Marriageville and Bill. We're going to go get mom. We're on our way. And then you hear the lamentation in his voice saying, Maybe we should do it another day. And we've been having you guys wait so long. But no, no, just go get mom. And come back this way. It's all cool. We don't care. Um, I just feel sorry for this waitress. Yeah, if I had my laptop, I would have had her listen to the podcast. You should have been able to listen to all three of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, around 6.20, I call Matt. I'm done calling mom at this point. <laughs> Matt's voice of reason here. <laughs> I say, hey, Matt, where you guys at? Uh, it looks like we're on Marysville. Then you hear Mom, Marconi! We're on... You guys weren't on Marconi, were you? No, we weren't on there yet. We yeah. Were, we were pulling up towards it. But. Yeah. Because <clears throat> when she... Yeah, she's like Brad. When he says, oh, I'm on Watt Avenue. I'll be there in a few. That means he's just not leaving the house. <laughs> so, uh, finally, at 642, they walk in the door. I see Uncle Ron. It, I'm glad I told Matt to call us because if I would have told Mom to call us, when they get to the restaurant, she would have been wandering around the restaurant looking for us aimlessly. So Matt texts us, we're here. I peek up, Uncle Ron's there. Uh, Matt just becomes the king of the table. <laughs> Give me some nachos! <laughs> Give me some buffalo blast and I'll have a pepperoni pizza. Yeah, he. You could, it was apparent that he had a few drinks. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and then he orders a Coors Light to wean himself off. Uh... <laughs> From the drinks that he's been having, and uh, we we t- you know we eat our food, and you know Matt I asked for a box, and I said Matt, uh, you know she might think that instead of her, her box, you know get me a box, you might be referencing a vagina, and he said that's right, give me a vagina and my check please, <laughs> <laughs> and as he's saying this. A waitress is walking by and just gave the most <laughs> obscure look ever. And she probably told the other waitresses why she didn't bring us a check for probably another 20 minutes. <laughs> and then we were talking about penises for some reason. And as soon as we walked by, Brad 
Yeah, because Matt says that Mia can be a dick sometimes, his daughter. Yeah. And that's right, Mia could be a dick. And then the way, same way you're walking <laughs> right by. Like, what is wrong with these people? Yeah. So we ended up uh, having a good time there, ordered some great food. Uh, and it was, you know, a fun time. So uh, we it looks sounds like that we're going to be ending this episode here shortly. I did just want to say that uh, Matt and Nick, I enjoyed having you both here. I plan to do this in the future. Uh, have Matt here when he gets back in Sacramento for a few months. Nick, I'd like to have you back regularly when you can, maybe on the weekends, uh, talk about some of our stories. All right, so I guess we will see you next episode of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Matt. Nick. Have a good week. Happy hunting. <laughs>